Knockoff Nation, Danny and Briss are on deck for episode 40. Episode 40. Cheers, yeah. son. Cheers, dog. Still feels trippy to me that we're doing this though, eh? Hey? When you get you get 40 in and it's like, oh, yeah, we, it's do, funny. we do have a body of work here, eh? It's, it's funny it's, how the dynamic changes when you stick a pair of headphones on and a microphone in front of yourself. Because like we would do this probably on a Friday night anyway, mm. but... We just plug into the record button. Yeah. And yeah. it's sort of like all of a sudden it's different. You have to sort of prepare for a little bit. I've I've written down a list. Not that we stick to a list ever, really. Mm. Like uh We've had, it's yeah. good to have some ideas up your sleeve of shit you want to go to potentially. Yeah. I have been asked that too by like cup knockoff nation in the past too, especially on the back of Chris Lynn episode. Like for me as a as a cricket fan, episode thirty nine stood Stood well and truly on the podium for me in terms of podcasts we've done so far. Shout out Chris Lynn, fucking all, yeah, all round great yeah. dude. Solid hour of power that one. It was fucking. And we haven't good. Um, and just to get the opportunity to meet sort of personalities like this along the way. This has just been so fun, and we don't. People ask the questions that we ask on here and stuff. Oh, you know, do, do you have a, a run sheet or anything? It is loose as fuck. Super the, basic. The, the run sheet that we have. It <laughs> I'm might literally be, writing the list yeah. on a post-it note with a highlighter. Yeah. It looks like <laughs> yeah. fucking shit. That's it. We do, we do our homework here. Whoa. Not, yeah. Huge lightning going on out the back out here. The st- first storm cast of the season. If you're a uh, hey, l- hey, listening... Hey, careful with that storm yeah, cast. Yeah, that's... That's, an, that's ominous to me, man. We're here in the penultimate weekend of the NRL season. My favourite code in this uh, great country we call home. Four teams remain. Grand finals next Sunday. Uh, teams that are still alive, we've got Broncos, the Brisbane-based team play the Melbourne Storm this weekend, who were the minor premiers. We have to travel down there to play them at home. And on tomorrow night, Team from North Queensland. Jesus, it's good to be a Queenslander, isn't it? Yeah. That's the Cowboys, though. They just managed to fucking stay in there. Everybody wrote them off hard when JT got injured. Mm. But they're still, they're they're still there. They're a tough footy team. They're a tough footy team. They've yeah. come up against a second-place Roosters side where tomorrow night down in Sydney. So Cowboys riding on the quest, crest of a wave at the moment. I mean, they're resilient footy team. Yes, you take out two world-class players and are basically the greatest of all time in Thurston out of there, but... Still got a cool group of guys there that are representative footballers who are resilient and have won a premiership. There's still a lot of that group that has managed to stay together in that footy team, so they know what it takes at this time of year. And mm. I'd love to see them get through. And if if I am being honest, I can see that the Cowboys are a more likely chance to book a grand final berth than Brisbane for mine. What's your take? I don't know, man. I've um, I don't know. I've in in recent months become a super diehard Broncos fan. Hey. And uh, I just fucking – I love the way they play and I just – yeah, I've got that faith, man. I reckon uh, I reckon we can come through. Like there's there's always that bit of doubt in the back of your mind. But the thing that I go to with the Queensland teams, man, is like we've got all the same play, players that play in origin, you know. So it's like, fuck, on any given night, these guys are all used to the big lights and the, and the high-pressure games. And when you've got somebody like Wayne Bennett at the helm, it's just like – you can't help but have that passion, mm. that faith. I don't know. But Melbourne's basically Queensland as well. I mean, they're, they're based is, down there, but it it's is. just the yeah. ridiculously good players and from Melbourne Queensland. And Melbourne is so just, fucking yeah. good. Melbourne is so fucking good. It's definitely not an easy road for Brisbane, that's for sure. The, the culture within that footy team is incredible. Where off a, coming off a week off, having to go down, down there tonight, it's an enormous task for Brisbane. And I think that they can do it. I think there's, the start of the contest is important where... If Melbourne get out to 12 nil in Melbourne, mm. it almost becomes like the All Blacks booting ahead to fucking yeah. 12 nil. Yeah, they're up I mean? against it down there. What have, what have they got them at there? $3.85 for the win. So getting up to that $4 mark, that's pretty mm. good, you know? That, that, that's the uh, that's the underdog there for sure. That's the uh, Conor McGregor Mayweather mm. sort of mm. spec odds. That's how that finished. But the fight from the weekend... Boxing, look, it's, it's fun. And I, I really... I did enjoy that fight. But the past two events in terms of Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, Golovkin, Canelo from the weekend, that seemed it just solidified to me my love of mixed martial arts. Absolutely, yeah. I, I just, uh, I don't know, all due respect to the sport of boxing and um, the purists that, you know, really understand the intricacies and the subtle nuances of, mm. of you know, sh- strategy and, and gameplay that exists in, in which shot you, sh- shots you choose and... You know, like I saw, I got to see a little bit of that with Floyd Mayweather, the way he sort of changed gears about three times in that fight and not your sort of 
not your sort of usual MMA strategy because, you know, you can kind of go in with a bit more reckless abandon like the way Floyd was coming forth in those sort of like middle middle rounds where he was just like putting his hands up, marching forward and copping mm. shots. Like if, if he were to do that in MMA, I don't know, that's kind of like, you know, right kamikaze, death suicide warrant. wish. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So... I don't know. I, I just uh, I don't find it as interesting. And I and I made the comment during the week that I was probably more interested in my Instagram feed, like during that fight, which a whole bunch of people will be like, "Fuck you," you know, you're missing out on a lot there. There's Obviously, a lot of big there, asses on there. Though. I I understand. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of big asses to check out while the fight was on. <laughs> but yeah, I understand that those two are the absolute upper echelon, mm. absolute top of the game. But. I, I was more interested in the Luke Rockhold uh, David Branch fight yeah. after that, which was fun in itself. Like the Golovkin, it was fucking yeah, know, a bit, a bit yeah. worrying for Rockhold in that first round for sure. But yeah. as as you've seen in that screenshot that he mm. took, he was telling everybody, "Can't Calm, calm down, I got this." Oh, like, he, he was. Yeah, it, it ended up being comfortable in the end, but yeah, there was moments there where that mm. were weren't great. But isn't it amazing he with, ate with that, the, that combination? Just just flush like pretty much three or four. I've yeah. listened to the Joe Rogan fight companion since that uh, since that card, and they were calling him to be like, "Oh, he's hurt. Oh shit, he got lit up." Yeah, like yeah. Oh, oh oh oh. That was with uh, oh. Jim Norton and Eddie yeah, Bravo. That's right. Yeah, yeah Jim Norton. Man. I listened to a bit at the start of it. I do like Jim Norton. Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. I, I do as well. I mean, I quite often I, listen um, to UFC I've seen, Unfiltered. I've seen his. Um, his Netflix specials, special yeah. there. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Though. He just, I'd love to know. Have you watched it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen Isn't it. Isn't it any good? Yeah, it's all right, man. It's yeah. all right. He just hates on himself. That's basically what he just rips on himself the, the entire time with his yeah. sexual habits and shit like that. But <laughs> it's amazing in Canelo and Golovkin. Like, I, I, that, that was a great fight. I, I really, really enjoyed it. But the question marks that mixed martial arts raises in terms of, you know, we're looking down the, the barrel of, say, potentially a. Khabib versus Conor McGregor or something where, geez, he's got those flashy takedown, like those flashy stand up, but is he going to be able to stuff the takedown? And it just adds a lot more equations in the head for me as a fan. And I'm only a casual fan of boxing. And I'm sure if you're a, a boxing purist watching Golovkin Canelo on the weekend, you're watching that fight a hell of a lot differently to, the, to what I am. You know what I mean? Where I'm seeing him, seeing him go at it, but these people would understand it a lot more at a fundamentals level and a like biomechanics like, and shit yeah, like that. But, yeah. um, for me, it, MMA just asked all the right questions and it's like, oh, where Golovkin and shit was over. But then when I'm watching Rockhold and I'm like out of my chair, like he's got his back, he's got his back. Like he, Rockhold's top game is yeah. ridiculous. There was a um, – the fight of the night. Did you read about that? I didn't see the actual fight, but it was on – Do you know game. my name yet? You know my name yet? It wasn't him, was no, it? No, no, no. But how, how cringe was that, honestly? <laughs> honestly. Anthony Smith, shout out. Great, that, that, great was a fun, that was a fun great fight against, against Hector Lombard. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the whole know my name yet thing, like you'd... I just thought it was... Um, mm. It was... It was the first time we've seen anybody sort of like yelling across the cage during a break during the fight. Because yeah. Because that's, that's... Like repeatedly you know, anyway. Yeah. That's risky, you know, yeah. Because yeah. the fight's not over yet. No, that's right. You can... Yeah. To his credit, he won, but geez, if Hector comes out and starts his him clean and yeah. he stands over him. It's, it's funny though, like that um, that Conor McGregor shit-talking model is catching on and we've discussed it on the podcast before about how fighters need to adopt that. But not everybody has it, but a few people are trying it and a few people that maybe don't have it. But mm. there were definitely some call-outs on that uh, fight night on the weekend. Mm. Uh, Luke Rockholds was... Um, Socially awkward. So, so he sort of... Um, it was good that he was calling out it was strategically good because he was calling out gsp as well as bisping so setting himself up for either you know option of that result but uh he just kind of trailed off there (laughs) it must be so hard in that situation with oh man you're so hyped up the the, the adrenaline the hype the cameras and you're all all of a sudden public speaking Mm. in front of fifteen thousand. it's like oh geez what, what what's going on here but um Rockhold sort of inferring that it, that was his that was his right to that belt with the title fight with Bisping. Robert Whitaker's got the interim belt. You can get back in line, Luke. Yeah. As much as bad as that sounds, you've got an interim champion in there. The winner of George Saint Pierre versus Michael Bisping fights Rob Whitaker. Like that, that's just a no brainer. So it's up to Rockhold. Rockhold sat on the shelf for fifteen months after losing to Michael Bisping before fighting David Branch. Would it be wise? To sit out again, I, for me, I think he has to take a fight. Mm. Who do you like, Rockhold Romero? That's yeah. that's basically yeah. it. 
Like, yeah. 80, 85 is, is a deep, solid division, but, I mean, you take Gaygaard out of there now and it's not as stacked. Where That's the, true, the yeah. only really Gaygaard was yeah. up and coming. The only real fight for So for Gaygaard's Rockwell last now. fight was that... Um, Beat down that of... Uh, turned over decision with, with Wideman. Or yeah, it was that, that was that was yeah that's, that was his that's last. a shame to yeah, go out on that shame one. to go out like that. But he'll he'll go straight to Bellator. I think he could be a two weight world champion at Bellator. And mm. with McGregor going and talking about the Ali Act to Congress, yeah. What, MMA, tell, tell me about that. What's the go with that? What is that for me? Like, it, p- pull it up on Wikipedia or like if you can. This is what it, the Ali Act is a thing that was endorsed by Congress in the United States to protect boxers from. Basically, sort of fraudulent and promoters, from from what I can gather, it's just sort of to protect the integrity of boxing. So, right. it basically, so prevents the Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act, commonly referred to as the Ali Act, is a federal law that was introduced in 1999 and enacted in uh, 2000 by the 106th Congress to one protect the rights of the welfare of boxers, two aid state boxing commissions with the oversight of boxing, and three increase sportsmanship. And yeah, that that there's, that does continue there. The problem with that, I see a hole in that already. We've read three dot oh, points okay. about this about this agreement. Continue, like, keep reading the third there, D. Uh, promoters yeah. are taking advantage. Uh, increased sportsmanship and integrity within the boxing industry. Uh, the Act amends 1996 Professional Boxing Saf- Safety Act by expanding upon legislation and against exploitation, conflict of interest, enforcement, as well as additional amendments. Point two right there. If you flash back to only as recent as Sunday, Adelaide Bird, the judge on that panel for Canelo Golovkin, said Canelo Alvarez won 10 of those 12 rounds. Gennady pressed forward like it was his fucking... like it was going out of fashion. Where he, he Canelo looked great. I think Canelo's star power went up tenfold after that fight. I thought that was probably one of the best Canelo looked in there. But Golovkin... W- walked him down all night And I had Gennady winning that fight personally I'm a Triple G fan So whether I'm watching it with Golovkin coloured glasses Who knows But I, I-, I thought Gennady had done, a- done enough to win And it's a shame Because he now has a draw on his record When he previously was like 38-0 no. So he's 38 and 0-1 and now so. so if somebody called it by such a landslide Then how did it get ruled a draw? Uh, one judge called it Canelo one judge called it Golovkin. The other called it a draw. Uh, so okay. the third wasn't okay. there. So right. So it has to be a They're draw. They're talking about sort of preventing fighters and stuff, but mainstream well, boxing well, media. Had that whole, um, he had that whole teammate or somebody that he knew was killed in the cage, like mm. in, in fighting. So um, he's been quite vocal about that. Mm. Which, so he's which, looking to trying to get that this Ali Act enforced in mixed martial arts. Right. Mm. So that's... So what would that? Yeah, would it would it affect the like fighter pay and stuff like that? I think, or I, I think surely, so. surely like a you know it, what is it? WMG Media or yeah, what's WMEIMG the, is the is the the company that looks after him. But it, surely I think it just, they would have that shit covered so yeah. that it's not like it's, mate, they they're the going to let a a union type body in stand to over them, to like. determine yeah. what the fighters get paid. Like I think that's probably why the UFCs. Been so successful because it's not like a boxing, and it it kind of is like the fight as a staff, which you know, arguably when the Reebok deal came in, was some pretty fucking unfair conditions. Like the amount of money that dudes are getting to, I think that's precisely it. With in terms of protect the integrity of fighters, where you've got guys fighting for on a league that's just been bought for four billion dollars on a main card on Fox Sports primetime in the USA, who are fighting for thirty and thirty and getting paid. Two thousand dollars to wear a pair of Reebok sponsored board shorts, mm. like in the mm. cage. So I think it's gonna, in the long run, if it was passed, I think it may increase chances for fighters in the mid to lower tiers of the UFC. So UFC is obviously the pinnacle, but there's the stars, and then the, there's five hundred and fifty plus guys on this roster currently. Mm. So you've got the superstars, the Conor McGregor's, the Nate Diaz's, all John Jones, Cormier, all the high end guys that were household names, but You've also got a shitload of filler in there that these guys are leading off the card. So I think if this can get passed from an outsider looking in and the shit that I've heard, it could go a long way to getting these guys looked after a little bit more financially and maybe 
potentially one day for being some sort of pension if you meet certain criteria. Yeah, perhaps, right? true. Where true. Look at a guy. And we when we started this podcast started off as a blog. I wrote an article on there about Melvin Gillard when we first <laughs> when we first did it. Where huge Melvin fan. And now he like he just got knocked out again last weekend in a bare knuckle boxing match in the UK. So he came to Australia, got knocked out by a guy. He took a fight at one eighty five pounds, fought an Aussie guy when Shawnee Johnson was on, on the podcast. Like sure. he fought that night. So we had he fought a guy who was one eighty five. He cut a shitload of weight and was fucking massive for eighty five. And he fights Melvin who fought at fifty five in the UFC. Mm. Melvin comes out, and gets lit up. All of six weeks ago, flies over the UK and gets fucking knocked out clean again. Like it's just another L on his record, still going around. He's got. A Whereas fucking... he's had he's had fuckloads of fights in the UFC. Is there some sort of worthy pension there that that can come in, perhaps for people like this? Company's bought it for four million. If you're on the roster, and it's not saying that you need exorbitant amounts of money each week, but mm. there should be some sort of incentive benefit coming in for guys that have met certain criteria in that company. Oh, absolutely. And like, I don't know, just, I guess a sport is always going to be, you know, corporatized, you know, it's always going to have to have a fucking business acumen attached to it. So you can't just say, oh, you know, anybody who's in martial arts gets looked over, like look, looked after for, you know, providing their entertainment and shit mm. like that. It's like, you've got to be in bed with the company, you know, but fucking Melvin, ha- Melvin has got, 32 wins and 19 losses is just that, on his is record. Is that in man. MMA? That's in MMA. So he'd have... Yeah, see, that's like that's his most recent hundreds. one. He fought Izzy. Yeah, that's right. Izzy he'd has have hundreds yeah. more fights than that as well under his belt. That's so many fucking combative, you know, s- segments of time where you're copying a lot of damage to the dome and, you know, what a crazy... What a crazy life. It's ridiculous, really. And for a guy who's his age, he's been hard at it since he was 19 or 20. He's 34. Now, he, yeah. He's now 34 years old. He's got the miles on the on Melvin's clock. Being experienced pa- paints to 34. Same yeah, yeah, paints to same It's not... Uh, it's potentially not good. And that's mm. where... We, the more people know about dra- brain trauma, the more it's really coming to fruition. Where Have you seen um, uh, that doco? It's like the, f- the fight game. What's it called? No. Uh, oh, on Netflix. On Netflix. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know um, what you mean. Not not dog fight. Not it's the other no, one. No, it's no, the no, actual no. like the up and comers progressing through. Yeah. Uh, uh, Netflix. The price? No, 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 no. It's not that. The hurt business. Yeah, right. The hurt business. So is that based on head trauma? That doco. It's it's like you know he- hev- heavily in there yeah. like um, superliminal <laughs> <laughs> subliminally messaging you about yeah. uh, head trauma during yeah. the thing. Yeah. No, it's actually quite Super. like uh, <laughs> liminal subliminal liminal. <laughs> superliminal. <laughs> but um, it uh, it just kind of covers you know like like the hurt business. It, it's the, it's a good title for it you know because it's about these guys who for a living and and uh, having to suffer head trauma and. And the sort of non-glamorous side of it. Once all the big lights are off and you're no longer a star and you're sort of the retired guy who's mm. now aging with the damage of your career and not getting looked after, you know. A lot a lot of times you're having to generate your own income through like a lot of these dudes are doing their own camps and, and, mm. and, and different stuff like that. But um, look at Mark Kerr, the Smashing Machine documentary. Yeah. Prime example yeah. of that. Mark Kerr was one of the pioneers of mixed martial arts just sourced to the absolute eyeballs full of steroids going out and performing each night and his, his mo was basically ground and pound where super strong grappler gets you to the floor and beats you up that was his mo but you see him getting banged up with the knee injuries and the knockouts and stuff that he had said it i've, I've said it to him black and blue in the face on this podcast sporting careers are a finite experience where mark's got the vast majority of his life ahead to lead after these traumas that he's taken where he was, a, he was a used car salesman in, in his home state where it, Mark Kerr the sm- from The Smashing Machine. So he, like, there's a long time after it. And that's what the more we learn about head trauma, apparently Aaron Hernandez, the ex New England Patriot who murdered those guys and they're like gangland stuff. We've talked about that on here before. Apparently his family now, because his, his uh, brain got sent to Boston University after his suicide oh, in jail. Really, so really. Because he's from football and that's the buzz thing at the moment. Let's investigate these brains of people that have passed and mm. have had 
long careers in the game. And apparently, the amount of CTE on this guy's brain was like unworldly. Yeah. So, for anyone who's seen that concussion movie where Will Smith, it's based on a true yeah. story. You should watch it. It's pretty good. Like, uh, I don't know the ins and outs of the the true story of the doctor or the um, yeah, I think he's a surgeon. Um, and he's, I believe he's South African or Zimbabwean or whatever. Yeah, his accent. It's it's all right. Yeah. It's decent. You sort DiCaprio of DiCaprio do better. Danny Archer would DiCaprio. Oh, yeah. in Archer, a South African yeah, accent. Yeah. Fuck no. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. He, you can't. I thought he killed that. Actually. Can't fuck with Blood Diamond. Yeah. I mean, I, holy I thought shit. He, I thought he killed that. You were journalist. Oh, yeah. Piss off, huh? Normally, I like to get kissed before I get fucked, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just put ah. Uh, yeah. On the yeah. End Matty of Bowen, huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> that did. But like he crushed that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But um, who was I talking about? Sorry. Will Smith Will in Smith concussion. In concussion, yeah. <laughs> and uh, once you sort of suspend your disbelief of his shitty South African accent, it tells a pretty decent story about when they first started discovering that, you know, these high impacts, you know, birds have these things that are basically, you know, manufactured or however you want to sort of term it into their brain so that when they like dive bomb into the ocean to catch fish and shit like that, they don't suffer the same trauma. It's some sort of like protective layer or whatever that, that mm. has evolved in their brain. And um, human beings don't have that. We're not designed to hurdle no. at each other. And, and these NFL players will put the helmets on or whatever and then they just... Get re- hit and go out. Reckless like, abandon yeah. and, and just fucking and hurl themselves at each other and shit. And, uh, and, it, and it talks about like obviously a few... Well, gives you the dramatization of a few true cases of dudes just basically going fucking crazy in their 40s and and like late 40s and stuff like that basically getting super depressed and just mentally unstable and and crazy and super high suicide rate for these guys so it's um it's serious shit man and uh and they touch on it in that hurt hurt business doco Mm -hmm. like with this one guy who um say he's been around the fight game for ages but see if you recognize him uh where is he? GSP? <laughs> <laughs> no, this guy. Do you know who that is? Uh, Let's call him like... I need to see another shot of him if possible. Yeah, I can't remember his name anyway, but he's like they they have interviews with him where he talks about attempted suicides and stuff like that. And meanwhile, he's there with his wife and kids and dogs and stuff like that. Got, you know, fr- from the outside an okay life, but just that that traumatic brain injury just causing like mental mental Patterns and trends, poor mental yeah. health that you you can't really rationalize or deal with i watched um this uh resurface on netflix which is like um basically a, a, a 30 minute doco like short little doco about war vets from um iraq and afghanistan and stuff like u.s vets who've just fucking been blown up and like suffered terrible injuries and shit like that like Dudes who are basically like stumps, some of them, you know, mm. and they and they put them into this surfing program to sort of help them deal with their PTSD and stuff like that. I feel like the doco kind of oversells surfing as a cure for this stuff, but it, it tracks like these few guys that have found really, really fucking positive mm. benefit in surfing. This one dude who's, you know, obviously been in an explosion and he has no more legs, basically no arms, but one sort of shorter arm and he's designed – basically like a knee board right. but um can surf this thing and puts like a paddle to sort of extend his one arm and he's fucking shredding man like he's shredding this wave this like little stump of a dude like yeah no. like that's terrible terminology obviously but you know there's no other way that i can i can literally describe it but i was dead set like on the brink of tears watching this thing feeling for these people mm. you know because it is so fucking intense when you think about war and you think about PTSD and, and and you know it's a concept that as somebody who doesn't have PTSD you can kind of conceptualize and you can kind of like you know uh underst- yeah. understand a, a dictionary definition mm. of it but mm. you, but you don't really like feel it or understand it or anything That's like that right. and this one guy said something that I've I've never thought about in thinking of that equation before like you know dealing with war and de- dealing with having you know, lost friends in front of you and different stuff like fucking that you've seen, but also stuff that you've done, Mm. you know, because this guy's like the first time that I took somebody's life, like, and then he sort of stops himself in that sentence. He's like, 
the first time I took a child's life and then he kind of like chokes himself up at that point and can't can't continue and it's just this like <sighs> this mm. fucking I'm getting like choked oh, up talking about it now man. this like po- poignant moment that is just so fucking <sighs> so real mm. man for like thinking about you know ha- if you had have done that and having to then continue on in your life and live with yourself and find a way forward and rationalize that you did that because somebody else you know you 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 bought into mm. this, you know, military situation and not not bought into it, but, you know, you, like you believed in, in yeah. it. You believed in it. You believed in... You were employed. Like that was your, your form of employment at yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these guys, you know, it's... it's And it is more than employment because if, the, if we didn't have servicemen and we didn't have an army, we'd be fucked, you know, because sure. as human beings, we are still... We're not a, a pacifist culture at all. We're fucking. We're still it's very fucking violent here. We've yeah. been watching SBS News this week, and this like Trump is saying at the UN that he will totally destroy North Korea. Like that's that's shit that you can't say at the UN. You know mm. what I mean? That it's it's fucking scary times we're living in, man. Nobody is chill right now. It's not like we've reached the. You know, we've reached the the point in evolution where we're going to start being good to each other like that maybe exists in to- in in small pockets but oh, on the whole oh, man yeah oh we are still a fucking a mess of war and conflict it eh? is it's, man it is it's where you can get level minded people but that's not on the uh, that's not on the mass that's why it's almost you get appreciative when you do meet people that are on the level or a very similar wave to length to you where we here at Knock Off Nation, we ain't hating on anyone, man. You just run run your own race, basically, where you've got... We're talking about things where, you know, we'll, Trump saying we'll level a whole country and shit. It's enough as a hotbed out here right now about two homosexuals marrying each other, mate. Mm. Like, mm. That's, that's, ah. our, that's our main concern, you know? Yeah. Like, SBS, huge. SBS News is showing me, like, what they're terming the, the world's current worst humanitarian crisis is the... Um, situation in Yemen because they're um, fighting with the Saudis and basically that's their only food source. So it's just basically like no food in Yemen. And there and there's all this footage of these babies that are like insanely malnourished, man, like really, really confronting shit, mm. like an eight-year-old that doesn't look any more developed than like a, a really, really skinny two-year-old. Sit down and rest. Like you can't move today. Like just... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and meanwhile we've got our, our news media and our our fucking conversation and and topics in in you know everyday life is like, are we going to allow two people to yeah. sign a piece of paper yeah. and and have and, a five hour say, day and yeah. say we're married and wear rings on their left finger? Yeah. Oh no, 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 we those three things like they have to be like re- regulated and controlled. It's like fucking let whoever wear a ring, yeah. let whoever say that they're married. Who gives a fuck? Why think, are we spending yeah. money to like have some postal vote? That mm. like you know who the fuck cares? Like yeah, I, I, I mean I like, don't. You know, That's the thing. I I I find it um, annoying almost yeah, and frustrating yeah. at this point where I can't escape it. I, I can I go on the internet, go on news media in Australia. It's right there in my face. Yeah. This this is what I'm what I'm seeing on a day to day basis. Out. Just get it out of the way. Like I, I'm the, like the a, rest of the not, world. Um, it's it's like you know it's it's a matter of time. Like the rest of the world has already shown that. This is like a ridiculous fucking conversation to be having. Like, mm. excuse me, out of all the other shit that's going on right now, like, why on earth are we focusing time and resources and attention I know, on this? I don't know. Like, it's, you know, let's up. move on. Let's. Like, I'm not. I'm not one for. I'm not fucking hugely pro marriage. Full stop. In general, like, I'm not. I'm not married myself. I'm, I'm a family man myself. I'm not married at, at this point in time. I've got no rush. You see people graduate from high school and they're married by 22 years old. Like, oh, we need to finish and get... We'll get married. Yeah. We'll get married and do this. Yeah. It's like... Man, I've got um, I've got a child that could say, says a fuckload more than a piece of uh, jewellery on my finger could could ever say sort of thing. So Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not in that spot. But if for people that do want to get married, just go out and get it done. It's, it's a five-hour day where everyone who, that I talk to who says gets married says they had a fucking great time on that day, but it cost them a shitload of coin and, and it was <laughs> over very quickly at the same time. So if two blokes want to dive into that and have their day, go for it. If two women want to dive into it, go, go that way. It's The the world's changed where if in the 1950s it'd probably get shut down. Different generation of people here 
who are almost, if you're anything like me, you are frustrated and just want it to get fucking signed off and get it out of the way so we can stop talking about it. It just yeah. seems so silly to me. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's like we're moving in that direction anyway. So, so you know, yeah. like why, why are we doing this pointless exercise? In- and it's all, it's all politicking and, you know, mm. different. Well, well, basically, it's, it's fucking Malcolm Turnbull who, you know, some people believed in as, as having sort of more... Um, you know, humanitarian sort of minded views still within a, a politically conservative, um, you know, economically sound political party. And it just shows that the prime minister basically is a figurehead and mm. it's it's the party that counts because he hasn't been able to move forward on climate change policies or on same-sex marriage policies, on, on things that you can you can just tick and flick if, if you have the support of your party. Mm. But instead he doesn't and, and his supporters, so he has to kind of politically dance around this issue. And the whole thing is kind of set up to benefit that party obviously they're the they're the party in power in in the federal government and their um you know supporters are more likely to believe in christianity for example it's a Mm. it's a more heavily christian based um party which then obviously translate into it oh of course of course yeah like it's it you wouldn't be able to see uh a prime minister of the libs that didn't you know go to church for Christmas mass or something yeah, like right. that, you know, they have to, right. it's, it's, it's a tradition that goes back to settlement times, you know, like right. one, once you, the church came in and that was affiliated with the political parties and stuff like that. Christmas Eve at mass. Yeah. Yeah. Get, but, me, um, get me in a pool with a cold beer. I, I actually felt, felt and, felt and hang on, just so let me finish. So, so like the, the, you know, ideological lines that are then drawn from the Christian faith into things like gay marriage and stuff like mm. that means that that's basically the stance of that party Obviously, not everybody in that party because there's a, a, an array of different opinions. Mm-hmm. That's how a you know a political party works. Yep. But ultimately, the you know consensus is that they they don't want it to go ahead. So something like a postal vote is not actually legally binding. So they've still got the opportunity to throw it out if they want to. Um, people that are more likely to use a postal vote up are the older generation who are the 1950s generation mm-hmm. potentially that you speak of so younger people are more transient changing addresses and things like that they're less likely to Thanks. receive their their hard mail That's um bit me hard yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. like and um and yeah so I, I don't know i think it's i think ultimately it will get up i think there'll be enough support and enough yeah. You know, th- we're in the social media generation now as well, and my entire Instagram feed is full of people doing the boomerang video of tick yes. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll probably do one nice. this weekend, fam. Nice. Like, nice. I'll, I'll get on board. You know, so That's it. Just, yeah. if if ev- every like you know person that you're following and stuff like that, I think people will get on board with it. I think social media will help and w- and we'll get it done. But That's man, it. for me, it is it is a frustrating exercise in. Uh, in politics is basically all That's it is, it. I, I, and, I, and and the vast majority doesn't really care either way. Like yeah. you know, I can see it as a potential boom for the economy as well too. Where you've got, I mean, each to, not not that you don't care either way because you you do care that there's a group of people that want it that we're saying can't have it. Mm. So it's not like I wouldn't care if everybody voted no because i i fucking do want us to vote yes i want us Mm. to get past these issues where it's like hey this is a group that are saying you know they want equal rights like we need to recognize other forms of sexuality like it's fucking 2017 Mm. we've seen that same sex people like to fuck each other where it's like the bonobos you know where where that sort of primate you know like Like, you imagine if we're I'm fucked off about it now to the point where I just want to squash it, move on. Let let's everyone lock it in. We're we're good to go. Everyone, I, I've voted yes. I've sent it back already. I'm only a, a recent on the roll as well too. I've, so I've, you joined, uh, you enrolled for this? Yeah, props basi- to you. Ba- basically, props to you. man. Yeah. Basically, I've I've never been on the books before. Had to, uh, as you say, with people getting hard copy mail, like missing out on that. Long story I won't go into, but it's cost me a bit of money financially as well to for that purpose. So I got got my affairs in order with getting everything to my address. So I, I have enrolled for this. Tell you what, I'm, it's seeing it everywhere now. 
just frustrates me why we're still going over it. I'll tell you what, I'll be fucked off in five years if we're here still talking about it. I know, I know. And that's the thing. Fuck. I I don't know where the try line is. I don't know where... It's no... Like... You know, I, I, how long like does to, this yeah. vote take? And then yeah. what does that then mean that the government decides if it's not legally binding? Like, how long is it going to take us? And how much money is I it going to take us? I you know, know. Mate, it's 120 mil now in five years' time. Fuck, man. My wage was a lot different five years ago to what it is now, just with inflation and, and mm-hmm. shit like that. Mm-hmm. Jesus, man. I'm... It's not like this group is going away, you know? So, mm. so it's like going to be social friction from this point onwards. Mm. So if... You know, we we need to recognise society for what it actually is, That's and it. and and not try and put it into this box that that might be you know drawn on ideological lines, religious lines. Um, you know, just j- I read this fucking real interesting study about statistically who would be most likely to vote no, and they've got sort of a range of um, you know categories that are. You know, one might be 80%, one might be 75 one might be 60 But the ones that are generally grouped the highest, uh, I think they broke it down into if you have um, a low education background, a low income, um, male are more likely to vote no. Fucking no. Um, people of first generation immigrant background, uh, people living in rural or remote areas. Um, and there was other criteria as well, but they were sort of the main ones that would like determine if somebody were to vote no. I think I think religion was in there. I'm not. Um, it would have to be, but I'm not sure how it fared. You know, but yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a weird thing, man. It's a weird thing when people are just so opinionated about something that's not it's not conflict. You know, no. Like we like you know compare it to Yemen right now compare mm. it to fill in the blank whatever big, big picture come on to squash it and get to the cannabis fuck yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean get to the fucking cannabis <laughs> like, uh, that's the long and the short of it here squash this shit get to the green where that at like, yeah yeah I think that's well the wheels in are already in motion for legalizing mm. cannabis like they've passed now um, medicinal yeah. purposes for God bless you for you cannabis know. I think for the use of uh, Epileptic fits mm, really? and um, and cancer pain relief. Good. So Good. unless unless you've got those two things, you're still not getting weed legally mm. in uh, in Australia. It'll but. it'll get there. We'll get this out of the way and progress to that. Tell you, we touched on Turnbull before. I felt for him when he got slammed for that photo of him and his grandchild at the at the footy. Did you <laughs> see that? Yeah, that was ridiculous, man. That was outrageous, mate. Yeah. He's, he's sitting there with a cold beer with his grandchild watching a game of football. For my version of Australia, you don't get much more Australian than that too. Mm. That's something that you mm. can be proud of. You're privileged enough to the point where you can go Saturday afternoon with your family, enjoy a sporting contest with and a good, and a good atmosphere and a, a couple of cold drinks after the end of a work week. That's the Australian dream for me and, and, and my personality, whether you you know go, go to the beach on Saturday afternoon, have a few beers and, and pr- prepare for some food with your significant others. That sort of shit there is, is real Australia for me. So people there digging into him about... Jeez, he's, how dare he breathe alcohol over a child like that and stuff like the Australia that I was raised in. The adults had a few drinks after they worked their asses off to give the, their children a, the best childhood mm. they possibly could. Yeah, like Monday to Friday, so shit like that. That's where social that's, media goes too far for me. Yeah, too, right? I, think, I love I, it. I and I'm think, active, but fucking hell, that's like it can get a bit ridiculous sometimes. And that's where I try totally, to stay out of any totally. of that sort of. But I think there's like it's just the thing with social media and the anonymity of the comment section, you know, mm. is just like you're always going to get somebody, whether they're actually attached to that view or not, just to throw some shit, mm. you know, to troll, to throw yeah. to throw something in there that's There's like... There's got to be a lot of that to it, yeah. You know, some, some really good-looking chick, like, you know, they're posing or something. Somebody's just going to go, oh, yeah, good one, you slut, yeah. or something hey, like that, hey, you man know? man face. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Some when, like, when they've got a kitten as their profile picture yeah. and, like, yeah, you know, yeah. it, anonymity yeah. is, can do really fucked up things to people. There's a lot of... Um, yeah, and and I just think, I, I think that's just the the range of psychology that the human animal has, you know. Yeah. It just has this sort of switch to go... In in between, like I don't know, I don't know. Do you ever just have this like? <laughs> Jeez, there's a lot of fuck with you. <laughs> it just it, it's Is not like it? I would ever. It, it's not like I would ever. Um, I definitely w- would never do something like that. Mm. But 
I've, I've thought at times just of the reality of like being able to influence reality at, at any given moment. At any given moment, you could push or you could be pushed by someone in front of a train just at, at the whim of, you know, what somebody decided yeah. to do. Somebody could just bring a gun to a place and just like mow mm. a whole shopping centre full of people down. I could do that. I could yeah. take that in. I could just like, you know, take a golf club and walk in and crack somebody over the head with it. You know, it's just like, it's so crazy when you We're think about... We're on a watch it. list now. <laughs> For sure, <laughs> dude. We're fine. We just got flagged. It's so crazy <laughs> when you think about the, the variety of options that are out there that we don't choose because of past experience, we know that it's better to get along. Mm. It's right. fucking. It is the, the, the gamut of the human yeah. mind. That's what we've uh, the old ad, the old adage. Don't be a cunt. Like, <laughs> it just resonates like yeah. so hard. Just don't do that. Yeah, like, don't do that. That's fucked up. If I did that, totally, that's it, mate. totally. You could, could have all those thoughts, but it's one thing to think those things like just, like in your own head. It's one thing to execute them as well. Too. Oh. So the, the mind wanders sometimes to very very bizarre places. Mm. Imagination, but it's one thing to think something. It's one thing to go and do it as well. So that's it. Yeah, it's that's one, like yeah. the argument that people will make with video games and shit, like mm. Grand Theft Auto, and say this is inciting violence and yeah. stuff like that. But there is a vast majority of people who are able to, you know, play a game like that or watch mm. a, a really violent movie and and still be able to draw that distinction between what's yeah. real life. That's the appeal to those games. Like I'm an enormous Grand Theft Auto fan, where. I haven't played it for a very, very long time, but those games always appealed to me because mm. it was so far from reality where yeah. someone cuts you off in traffic, you get out with a baseball bat and just put it into his bonnet. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so yeah. far away. Oh, I'd get, I'd get a couple of years for that if I, if yeah. I did that. Like That yeah. would fuck me up yeah. if I did that. That's why, that's why it's so funny. But yeah, it well, is. It's, yeah, it is, but it's like that. that's what we're all capable of. We all, you know, we all like to say... We put people in cages mm. for different shit, like, and so we should. If if you you know act on those thoughts, but you know it's it's a concept that human beings just happen to be aware of. It's like, oh, I could actually influence reality right in this mm. very moment. Like, you know, it's reality TV. Have you been, have you been watching Bachelorette? Shout yes. out, shout yeah, out Sophie watched, Monk. Shout out Sophie. I watched the first two episodes, yeah. but I've got to say, man, plus plus an interview with her and. Uh, and I'm calling, I'm going on record here. I'm calling bullshit on this one, man. I, uh, I, f- I get the phoning in vibe from Sophie. So I, I, I really rate her, man. I reckon fuck she's, yeah. I reckon she's cool as fuck. Won far. me over. Yeah, she's won me over, and uh, and she's like gorgeous as well, obviously. But um, yeah, I just, I don't feel. I guess I just feel like. Uh, right. Probably she doesn't have a lot to choose from. They've given her a whole bunch of younger guys. She said she wanted an older guy. Yeah. And I and I don't know. Just I just got the vibe watching it last night that it was like the way she was addressing everybody was kind of like she was the teacher and they were a bunch of young kids. Precisely. You know? She fucking and owned it was just like, all of those. Listen, dudes. you rookies. Like <laughs> owned all of those dudes. Was not obviously. Been in Los Angeles for the best part of a decade. Has has dated legitimate rock stars, people of significant wealth. Like. One of the good Charlotte boys, Jason Statham, she mm. went out with for a while. Was seen seen with Russell Simmons. Like, like ever heard of like Run DMC? Like he's fucking all all over that shit. People worth a significant cash and like in this sort of lifestyle and fame mm. and stuff. Is she going to settle down with a twenty eight year old bartender from Fitzroy? Like no, mate. Yeah, like, no. Yeah. It's just not going to. It's not going to be it. Where she looks super comfortable. Where in in that lifestyle that she led, she'd be used to people hitting on her and flirting with her. She's the the blonde Australian at this party where there'd be all exactly. sorts of debauchery and shit going yeah. on. Like I'm not stupid. Didn't didn't come down in the last shower sort of thing. There'd be glasses of ice cold nose eh, getting around like <laughs> ridiculous at some of these functions that she's attended, and it's been been with these people. And these guys last night, she didn't seem nervous one iota with these people, just played them off against each other because all these dudes have come in and done their nuts over her essentially where mm. there's this celebrity in front of them and she just happens to be super attractive for 37 years old as well for mine. Yeah, but, um, oh, fucking looking banging. She's like, no, none of these guys can get it, but she, she's really won me over with her personality actually. She seems super grounded for where she is and might be different at this age now to whether you met her a decade ago, but that's, people can change like that. Mm. And probably for the better at some times too, if you asked him as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to see how I go with this one. I got I got pretty fatigued towards the end of The Bachelor. Mm. Uh, just like you know, for me, it's the first couple of episodes. The uh, the awkward um, 
the awkward interactions and shit are what I would I go into it for. By the time it, you know, devolves into just this soppy romantic like yeah, there's three long, dudes there that love whimsical her. shots and and you know piano music over pre written montage yeah, scripts and oh, shit. Yeah, man. then then I'm I'm tapping out. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to see how I go with this one, man. I, I'm not uh, I'm not totally sold on the first two episodes. Channel Ten, shout out, banging. Well. We uh we've got to get you out of here. You've got uh you got plans for the footy. So um, go Broncos, go Broncos. Like we Bronx can get it Nation. done. Broncos Cowboys for an all Queensland grand final would be ridiculous for that long weekend. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing us beat the shit out of the Roosters as well oh, at the grand final. Oh. But um, Broncos Roosters final would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, beating them before you in know, a grand final. That's kind of like the mini Origin. That's mm. the that's the two capitals going going at it. Dylan Napa coming against the the boys. Oh, would yeah, you yeah. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I fucking really hope the boys can do it. I'm gonna fucking be watching with a heap of passion. And uh, and if if we don't get through, then we might throw out some DMs to a few of the boys and see uh, yeah. see who wants to come and have a chat, boys. Because we um, we got nothing but love for all you boys. Absolutely. We open shout out knockoff nation. We made it 40 deep. There's another 40 to come. We love what we do. We're hanging in there. See you next time. Peace.